A local woman serving with the U.S. Army goes missing when her Black Hawk helicopter goes down near Hawaii. A man rams police cruiser with his vehicle, and police confiscate 1,000 grams of meth in a drug bust. And it all happened this week. Welcome everyone to This Week, I'm Sean Allen. For the next half hour, we'll catch you up on news you may have missed and give you updates on the week that was in your hometown. The search for five U.S. Army service members, including one from Letcher County, continues off the coast of Hawaii after their helicopter went down Tuesday night. Folks in Letcher County are holding out hope that all of those aboard the chopper will be found. As EKB News reporter Chris Anderson tells us, they believe if anyone could have survived that crash, it would be their hometown soldier. U.S. Army service member and former Letcher County resident Abigail Milam remains missing following a helicopter crash off the coast of Hawaii. The UH-60 Black Hawk helicopter Milam and four other service members were riding is believed to have gone down at approximately 2.30 a.m. Eastern Time Wednesday or 9.30 p.m. Tuesday night local time. EKB News was able to confirm that Milam was on the chopper after family members in eastern Kentucky were notified Wednesday. The Army said Thursday that the search for the downed chopper and the missing crew members remains a rescue mission. Now those in her native Letcher County that know Milam are hoping to hear some good news. I hope they find them all, but you don't know how much you need somebody until you find out that something like this has happened. Since the news broke that Milam was aboard the chopper, scores of comments of concern have been posted and shared on social media. My daughter uh, sort of summed Abby up um, in one of her posts. She said, um, Abby is a little firecracker, and that's what she is. And so we know that um, she's doing everything she can to survive and come out on top. We're looking forward to getting that news that Abby is fine. I know how much of a fighter these people are. I know how much of a fighter she is. And I know that if she has a breath left in her, she's not going to give up. Hawaii News Now is reporting that debris from the wreckage of the chopper has been found, including at least one helmet, but there have been no signs of those aboard. We're praying for them for whatever the outcome is, and we're praying for the families also. In Letcher County, Chris Anderson, EKB News. Crystal meth has become prevalent in many counties, and now the city of Jenkins can unfortunately add its name to the growing list of communities being affected by the drug. Last weekend, Jenkins police officer Mike Garner initiated a traffic stop on a motorcycle for numerous traffic violations. According to court documents, the officer noticed the operator, 38-year-old Clarence Yeary of McPeak's branch at Jenkins, throw bags onto the ground. Deputy Jenkins Police Chief Josh Richardson told EKB News that Garner retrieved the bags and found that they contained approximately an ounce of crystal meth and more than 100 empty bags in order to sell the drug. Richardson said this is the first time he had encountered crystal meth inside the city. Officer Garner, then detained subject, placed him in his cruiser, walked over and located uh, approximately around an ounce of crystal meth and then a uh, smaller bag believed to be also methamphetamine. I've seen a lot of the shake and bake meth but this is the first time seeing the, the actual crystal meth which it proves it's here. I've heard about it but this is actually the first time that I've actually seen the crystal meth. Clarence Yeary was charged with felony counts of trafficking in meth and two counts of possession of a controlled substance. He was lodged in the Pike County Detention Center. Yuri was charged earlier this year with allegedly trafficking in marijuana and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Two men wanted on several outstanding warrants were arrested in Paintsville Thursday. A Paintsville police officer observed a motorcycle driven by 41-year-old Toby Akers of Martin pull into the parking lot of the Days Inn. Stapleton recognized Akers as being wanted in connection with a shooting that injured one man last month at Grethel. Inside the room, the officer found 61-year-old Hank Philip Pelfrey of Langley. The officer recognized Pelfrey as also being wanted on several drug-related warrants, and he was immediately arrested. Akers locked himself in the bathroom and refused to come out. Police finally kicked open the door and used a taser on him. 
They found him with a bag containing over 1,000 grams of meth. Police say the drugs have a street value of between $75,000 and $100,000, and they believe these arrests will have an impact. According to my chief of police, Mike Rowe, who also responded to that scene after the door was forced open and force was used on Mr. Akers, um, this is the largest crystal meth bust that has ever been made by the city of Paintsville. It's definitely a dent. Uh, we don't know how much of a dent it's going to be, but it's definitely a deterrent. Um, that much crystal methamphetamine can go to a lot of people, a lot of users. So we've taken a lot of that off the street with this particular arrest and this particular situation. Both men are currently lodged in the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center. Law enforcement continued waging the war on the drug epidemic Friday, serving more than a dozen arrest warrants for alleged drug trafficking in Knott County. EKB News reporter Chris Anderson was there. In Knott County Friday morning, six people were arrested in a drug roundup that targeted 14 alleged drug dealers, some with multiple counts of first-degree drug trafficking. 60-year-old Dwayne Blanton of Viper, 49-year-old Teresa Fields of Viper, 56-year-old Ricky Taylor of Red Fox, 27-year-old Dusty Shell of Red Fox, 44-year-old Scotty Church of Lit Car, and 24-year-old Andrew Hall of Mally were all arrested by Kentucky State Police and Knott County Sheriff's deputies and lodged in the Kentucky River Regional Jail in Hazard. It was great to have the Knott County Sheriff's Office working with us today. Uh, they provided uh, the sheriff himself come out today and he had three deputies with him. And so it really just gave us more manpower to safely do this operation. We're always, we have an operations plan just in case, you know, we do have, run across problems, but uh, we always do it the safest way. We always make sure we have marked cars that our troopers are in uniform so they're readily identifiable. And we always have at least two serving the arrest warrants. According to a statement from Kentucky State Police, the arrests resulted from months-long investigations by KSP Street-level detectives. So all 14 indictments, they're all felony charges. Um, some of them had more than one count of trafficking, but they're all trafficking in the, in the first degree, uh, which means it's a felony drug. And uh, most of these drugs were prescription medication and methamphetamine. Eight people with active arrest warrants from Friday's roundup are still being sought by police. They include 57-year-old Marvius Sturdivant of Mally, 58-year-old Ivan McIntosh of Mally, Carlin Estep, 25, of Lit Car, Kimberly Patton, 34, of Kite, Letitia Amberge, 32, of Mally, 47-year-old Gary Adams of Red Fox, 44-year-old John Adams of Red Fox, and 19-year-old Stephen McLean of Red Fox. Anyone with information on the whereabouts of those with outstanding warrants is asked to contact Kentucky State Police Post 13 in Hazard at the number on your screen. This is important to us, you know, targeting drug traffickers is important. Um, that really affects everybody in the community when we have that, that kind of issue. Reporting in Red Fox and in Hazard, Chris Anderson, EKB News. A Letcher County man is now facing felony assault charges after allegedly ramming a police cruiser with his vehicle. EKB News reporter Chris Anderson has the details. A Jenkins police cruiser is now out of service and a Letcher County man is now on the run from police. According to the Jenkins Police Department, a warrant has been issued for the arrest of 39-year-old Shannon Foltz of Whitesburg. The department says Foltz ran from Jenkins police officer Mike Garner on Sunday, leading the officer on a high-speed pursuit on Kentucky 805, illegally passing several other vehicles. Assistant Jenkins Police Chief Josh Richardson said that during the chase, Foltz intentionally caused Garner's vehicle to collide with his and actually ran into Garner's patrol car. Officer Garner advised that it happened several times between, I guess, the Neon area and then Thornton. Officer Garner advised one time that he tried to swerve to miss from hitting the guy and the guy actually jerked his vehicle over and hit the front of the officer Gardner's police car. This is the first time in seven years I've even heard of anybody doing this. The pursuit ended after the vehicle allegedly driven by Foltz lost control on Thornton Road attempting to turn onto a gravel road. Foltz allegedly fled on foot leaving three passengers behind in his vehicle. Instead of chasing the subject, Officer Gardner detained everybody in the vehicle. He did gather statements advising who was driving, and Officer Garner witnessed the guy leaving the vehicle and had a positive ID on him. Foltz is now facing numerous charges, including eight counts of wanton endangerment and one count of first-degree assault for allegedly intentionally colliding with Garner's patrol car. Officer Mike Garner was not injured in the pursuit. In Jenkins, Chris Anderson, EKB News. 
Last week, EKB News broke the story that a criminal complaint was imminent in last month's shooting of Phelps football coach David Jones. Monday, a criminal charge was officially filed and we got our first look at the defendant when he appeared in court. EKB News reporter Shelby Steele has the story. This morning, a warrant was issued for 28-year-old Dennis D.J. Page Jr. of Vinson Street in Williamson in connection with last month's shooting of Phelps High School football coach David Jones. Page is charged with malicious wounding, which is a felony offense. Page turned himself in to the Mingo County Sheriff's Office and was arraigned in Mingo County Magistrate Court before Magistrate Donald Sansom. Now that a uh, felony charge has been filed in Magistrate Court, there, there will be a preliminary hearing scheduled within 10 days. Page pleaded not guilty to the charge and posted bond. Jones was shot early in the morning of July 26 during an altercation at his home in Red Jacket. Police have not released any details about what led up to the incident. He sustained a gunshot wound to the abdomen but has since been released from the hospital and has resumed his coaching duties. There was a brief delay which was prejudicial to no one. The main reason for the delay was when the officers, I guess, responded to the scene that night. Uh, Mr. Jones had already gone to, I think, first Williamson Memorial Hospital and then he was transferred on to Pikeville. Mr. Jones indicated that he did not want to press charges. That's what he told law enforcement that night. The Mingo County Prosecuting Attorney's Office will be filing a motion today to revoke Dennis Page Jr.'s bond. At the time of this incident where David Jones was shot, uh, Mr. Page was on bond uh, in a bound over case and obviously his bond conditions included not being charged with any other crimes. If the bond is revoked, Dennis Page Jr. will be lodged in the Southwestern Regional Jail. In Williamson, Shelby Still, EKB News. A former fire chief in Letcher County has died. Truman Thompson, who served for a decade as chief of the Winesburg Fire Department, succumbed to a long battle with cancer on Tuesday. Thompson was the first African-American fire chief in Whitesburg and served for more than four decades in the fire service. Those that knew him knew Thompson as a mentor and a friend and someone that was always there when he was needed. Truman always left the impact on everyone he met uh, because he, he treated everybody equal and uh, he was a he was very well rounded. Anytime you needed anybody to talk to, he was willing to talk to you if he uh, if you wanted information he could give you information if you need help he would help you any way he could he was just all around just a fine man and uh, he served his community well here being a firefighter chief truman thompson was 70 years old attention nurse practitioners if you want to spend more time with the family the perfect position is available as pmc is hiring for school nurse practitioner positions you can work while kids are in school and be off in the summer with pay starting at over 38 dollars an hour and an excellent benefit package to learn more call allison lovely with pmc recruitment services at 606-218-4915 606-218-4915 Pikeville Medical Center, an equal opportunity employer. Drivers, start, start your, your engine. engine! Load up the family and head on over to the Lonesome Pine Raceway in Coburn, Virginia. Lonesome Pine Raceway has brought excitement to race fans for 45 years and is NASCAR sanctioned. Gates open at 4 p.m. on race days with races beginning at 7 p.m. Admission is $10 adults and children under 12 free. Lonesome Pine, Pine Raceway, Raceway, Coburn, Virginia. Visit thepineraceway.com for race information. Golden Corral now opens at 9.30 a.m. for seven-day brunch. Maybe you showed up for the strawberry cheesecake French toast or made-to-order omelets or delicious carved ham. Is that a mashed potato volcano? Nice. We have over 150 choices, but the only one that matters is yours. Golden Corral, your choice rules. Eastern Kentucky, beautiful, green, peaceful, friendly. But there's a darker side to these mountains. When crime is committed, sometimes cases go unsolved. Occasionally, the perpetrators even get away with murder. On our latest news segment, The Scene of the Crime, I'll be working with local law enforcement to help find justice for victims and their families. 
the scene of the crime, Fridays during the EKB News at 6 and 10, starting August 25th. Although Pike County has greatly benefited from the mining industry, it can sometimes cause problems as well. I spoke with county officials and residents who experienced those problems Monday. Here's what they had to say. A mine blowout in Pike County damaged roads and driveways of residents in the Miller's Fork Road area of Feds Creek today. Damage that some residents say they can't afford to fix. I've been filling up underneath the road over here, piling rocks under it where it's breaking through under the bottom of it, where it's washed out. But uh, I've got this bus uh, filled in to where I can get across it as of time right now. As of, as of now, I do, do not have the money to replace it with, and I'm, I'm sort of in the bind, and I just have to bear with it. County officials say that mine blowouts happen periodically in Pike County, but what causes them? It's like our terrain. The coal goes up and down. And so the water goes into these empty caverns down under the mountain and they fill up and build up and build up and then it sits there and where they mine close to the outside, they call it the outcrop, the pressure gets so great sometimes with water being, there, being held up that it eats through the dirt and then it blows itself out. So all this water that's built up back there comes rushing out. Smith went on to say that his crew quickly cleared the roadway once the water subsided. Reporting from Feds Creek, I'm Sean Allen for EKB News. Coming up, Chief Meteorologist Lathan Hopkins will be in with what we can expect from the upcoming eclipse. We'll be right back on this week. Pikeville Medical Center congratulates Mayo Clinic for being ranked the number one hospital in the nation. Earning the number one ranking from U.S. News and World Report as the top hospital in America really affirms two things. One, it affirms the quality of the practice at Mayo Clinic. And secondly, it affirms the Mayo model of care. Pikeville Medical Center is a proud member of the Mayo Clinic Care Network. PMC and Mayo Clinic, working together, working for you. It's a once-in-a-lifetime experience, and EKB-TV will bring it to you live. Watch Eclipse 2017, Monday at 2, brought to you by Appalachian Wireless. We'll be live from Hopkinsville, ground zero for the total eclipse, and live from the East Kentucky Science Center in Prestonsburg. Don't miss it. Eclipse 2017, only on EKB-TV. It's the high school football game of the week. Presented by Paul Howard Jr., attorney at law, and the Golden Corral Restaurant in Pikeville. This week, the Pikeville Panthers open their season against the Indians of Covington Holy Cross. The game of the week airs Saturdays at 7 and Sunday at 4 and 8.30, only on EKB TV. Birds will fly to their nighttime roost, temperatures will drop, crickets will chirp, and bright stars and planets will become visible as the day turns into night. Chief Meteorologist Lathan Hopkins has everything you need to know about Monday's eclipse being brought to you by Appalachian Wireless, an East Kentucky network company. Monday, August the 21st, the first total solar eclipse in the continental United States in 38 years will take place. Not many people had the opportunity to view the February the 26th, 1979 event because it only clipped five states in the Pacific Northwest. The eclipse this year is special in another way. This is the first time a total solar eclipse will travel coast to coast in 99 years, meaning everyone in the continental United States will see at least a partial eclipse, including right here in our area. But what exactly is a solar eclipse? We had the opportunity to talk to NASA scientist Dr. Alex Young about this highly anticipated event. So on August 21st of this year, the moon, sun, and earth will align up just perfectly so that the moon comes between the earth and the sun and casts its shadow down onto the United States. And starting in Oregon, the core of its shadow, called the Umbra, is going to travel across the U.S. at about 1,500 miles per hour, ending in South Carolina. And everyone in North America, 
cent Central America and a good portion of South America are going to also experience a partial solar eclipse. And if you happen to be in that 70 mile wide path that we just saw, then you will get to experience a total solar eclipse. In Kentucky, western parts of the state will have a front seat to the total eclipse. The moon's shadow will begin to move in shortly before 1 p.m. Eastern Time. The path of the total eclipse will move through Paducah, Hopkinsville, Bowling Green, and Madisonville from 2.23 through 2.28 Eastern Time before wrapping up in the bluegrass state shortly before 4 o'clock. No part of West Virginia or Virginia will experience the total eclipse, although the partial eclipse will begin for each state shortly after 1 p.m., with the peak around 2.30 to 2.45, and ending around 4 o'clock. Locally here in eastern Kentucky, western West Virginia, and southwest Virginia, our partial solar eclipse will begin between 105 and 108 Monday afternoon, depending on location. We will hit between 91 and 96 percent totality between 233 and 236, with the event ending between 356 and 359. In Pikeville, we will see 93.5% totality, leading to a view that looks a little something like this. The last time we had an eclipse of this magnitude, May 30th, 1984, when we had around 93% totality. We have another opportunity for a partial eclipse in less than seven years, on April the 8th, 2024. EKB is partnering up with our media partner, LEX18, in Lexington Monday to cover this event. Beginning at 2 p.m., we will have live coverage of the total eclipse from Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Then at 2.30, just minutes before the peak of the eclipse, I will be live from the East Kentucky Science Center in Prestonsburg. Coming up, Andrew Joyce will be in with a look back at the week in sports. Stay with us. We'll be right back on this week. Pikeville Medical Center congratulates Mayo Clinic for being ranked the number one hospital in the nation and the number one hospital in eight specialties by U.S. News & World Report. As a result of these outstanding rankings, Mayo Clinic was named to U.S. News & World Report's prestigious honor roll. PMC is a proud member of the Mayo Clinic Care Network. PMC and Mayo Clinic, working together, working for you. Drivers, start, start your, your engine. engine! Load up the family and head on over to the Lonesome Pine Raceway in Coburn, Virginia. Lonesome Pine Raceway has brought excitement to race fans for 45 years and is NASCAR sanctioned. Gates open at 4 p.m. on race days with races beginning at 7 p.m. Admission is $10 adults and children under 12 free. Lonesome, Lonesome Pine, Pine Raceway, Raceway, Coburn, Virginia. Visit thepineraceway.com for race information. It's a once in a lifetime experience and EKB TV will bring it to you live. Watch Eclipse 2017 Monday at 2, brought to you by Appalachian Wireless. We'll be live from Hopkinsville, ground zero for the total eclipse and live from the East Kentucky Science Center in Prestonsburg. Don't miss it, Eclipse 2017, only on EKB TV. Hello everyone, I'm Andrew Joyce with what happened this week in sports. This week, Community Trust Bank announced the lineup for the 33rd annual Community Trust Bank Pike County Bowl. CTB Eastern Region Market President Rick Newsom spoke of the $812,000 that has gone back to the schools in the past 32 years from bowl proceeds. This year's gain lineup was unveiled and the media was given an opportunity to hear from the participating coaches. The 2017 Pike County Bowl Legend Award winner, former Pikeville and UK lineman Bob Shirtliff was announced, as were the eight Bowl Queen candidates. We also got the thoughts of Kentucky's winningest coach, Philip Haywood. It's always a good atmosphere. You know, we have huge crowds for the bowl game. Uh, it's, it's something our kids look forward to, and it's something that over the years has really been good for us because it brings in some big name teams and it lets people know about the programs here in Eastern Kentucky, and in our case, Belfort High School. But it's been a great bowl game, and great thanks to the Community Trust Bank and the bowl committee and all the things that they've done and the original guys that came up with the idea because it's been such a good thing for football in this area. 
The 2017 Pike County Bowl kicks off Friday, August 25th at Belfry's KM Stadium, Eastridge versus Phelps at 635, followed by Belfry battling Huntington High at 835. Saturday, August 26th at Pikeville's Hamley Athletic Complex, Shelby Valley meets Pike Central at 635, followed by the host Panthers challenging Lexington Christian at 835. Tickets are available at the schools and Pike County locations of Community Trust Bank. Also this week, we saw a new school, new mascot, new uniforms, and a new school's first win. The volleyball tri winning tradition continues at Floyd Central. Allen Central's Rebels won six consecutive regional volleyball titles. The Lady Jags, made up of players from South Floyd and Allen Central, continued that winning tradition. And as you see, their first game here, they opened the volleyball season with the school's first win in any sport. A three set to none win over Johnson Central. And the University of Pikeville Bears football team wrapped up summer camp with their final public scrimmage this week at the Hamley Complex in Pikeville. Here's head coach Al Holland Jr. with his thoughts on his team's play. It's been a good camp. Stayed pretty much injury free until the last couple days. Uh, we've got some, a couple guys banged up, but uh, you know, guys have pushed each other, got better. Uh, and continue to improve. Uh, defense has got a whole lot better and some young guys stepping up and making plays and, uh, you know, offensively try, still trying to find that rhythm. You know, feel like we'll be uh, in good shape come uh, game time next Thursday. I'm Andrew Joyce, and that is This Week in Sports. Pikeville Medical Center congratulates Mayo Clinic for being ranked the number one hospital in the nation. Earning the number one ranking from U.S. News & World Report as the top hospital in America really affirms two things. One, it affirms the quality of the practice at Mayo Clinic, and secondly, it affirms the male model of care. Pikeville Medical Center is a proud member of the Mayo Clinic Care Network, PMC and Mayo Clinic, working together, working for you. Drivers, start, start your, your engine. engine. Load up the family and head on over to the Lonesome Pine Raceway in Coburn, Virginia. Lonesome Pine Raceway has brought excitement to race fans for 45 years and is NASCAR sanctioned. Gates open at 4 p.m. on race days with races beginning at 7 p.m. Admission is $10 adults and children under 12 free. Lonesome, Lonesome Pine, Pine Raceway, Raceway, Coburn, Virginia. Visit thepineraceway.com for race information. Golden Corral now opens at 9.30 a.m. for seven-day brunch. Maybe you showed up for the strawberry cheesecake French toast, or made-to-order omelets, or delicious carved ham. Is that a mashed potato volcano? Nice. We have over 150 choices, but the only one that matters is yours. Golden Corral, your choice rule. Eastern Kentucky, beautiful, green, peaceful, friendly. But there's a darker side to these mountains. When crime is committed, sometimes cases go unsolved. Occasionally, the perpetrators even get away with murder. On our latest news segment, The Scene of the Crime, I'll be working with local law enforcement to help find justice for victims and their families. The Scene of the Crime, Fridays during the EKB News at 6 and 10, starting August 25th. Here are some upcoming events that you may be interested in. The Pike County's Steph Ratliff, otherwise known as the Kentucky Art Rat, will be having an art reception at the Mountain Arts Center Thursday, August 24th from 6 to 8 p.m. Enjoy a relaxing float down the Leviza Fork as the Leviza Fork Paddle Fest will take place Saturday, August 26th from 8.30 till 3 p.m. Launch watercraft at the boat ramp behind Billy Ray's Restaurant in Prestonsburg. Lunch will be available in Paintsville and a shuttle back to Prestonsburg for $10 per person. Please call the Prestonsburg Tourism to reserve a meal and a shuttle at 606-886-1341. I hope you enjoyed our look back at some of the stories that made headlines this week. Be sure to tune in next weekend at 6.30 p.m. right here on EKB-TV. For this week, I'm Sean Allen. Have a great weekend.